Welcome to Break Into Tech Show with Professor Temi Akinwumi of My IT University, a multi-award winning tech CEO, career coach, and mentor with decades of hands-on tech career will ensure your career dreams come true. Join our extraordinary show today on groundbreaking topic for a successful career. Do you want a $100,000 job as a cybersecurity professional, scrum master, business analyst software QA, cloud architect, data analyst, technical recruiter, and more? Visit www.myituniversity.com to schedule a call. Come and get inspired to secure a lucrative job. Keep the job and grow on the job. Relax, receive, and see results. We're glad you're here. Share, like, and comment. Oh, well, everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us today. It's another great day, another wonderful, wonderful day. My name is Professor Temi, and um, I will be discussing some wonderful topic today. We want to know where you are joining us from and, um, you know, say hi. Let us know where you are joining us from so we can greet you properly. So I know you are joining us from all over the world. Thank you so very much for joining us this time. Hopefully you have your notepad ready. You know how we do. Notepad and pen. So because you're going to be learning a lot from here, we're going to be discussing about cybersecurity interview questions and answer series part two i know most of you you really really love this program the last time we had it last week and i've seen a lot of great comments a lot of great people asking and so excited that we brought this program you know we are always here to to make sure that we can give back to you and also help you to to win the job out there to keep the job and grow on the job so that's our goal and our aim so I thank you all so very much for being here. Make sure you follow us on YouTube, follow on Facebook, follow us on LinkedIn, okay? And also join us on Clubhouse, we are programmed. So tonight we're gonna go deeper into the part two of our series on cybersecurity interview question and answer. And you know, uh, we are back with, I'm back with my, my great mentee that has become a mentor and she's gonna introduce herself so we can start right in. Welcome. Good afternoon, good day, good evening. Um, great to be here. My name again is Louis, a continuation of our last uh, week discussion. And uh, I'm ready to do a deep dive into um, what we're covering today. So thank good. you. Good, good. Thank you for the introduction. So we're gonna be discussing, because last time we're gonna do a quick recap. We did a part, uh, part one of the series. If you have not listened to it before, go on our YouTube channel. Go look for um, youtube.com slash at my IT university. You'll be able to see the 10 questions we discuss, we discuss. Today we are going deeper and we are focusing on compliance and other areas of cybersecurity pretty much. And today you're going to notice that we are going into some behavioral questions situational questions, scenario questions, as well as technical questions. So feel free to note this question so you can do some more research on them. We have done due diligence. We have added some of the answers to the question as well for you, for your comfort. So make sure you follow for your convenience, follow us closely, and then you will really enjoy it. One thing you have to know is that before you can break in into lucrative role in tech, you have to prep yourself ahead. You have to prep. So take all these questions and answers, prep and prep and prep. One of the best way to prep is by looking at when you prep very well and you write these things down, go into the, go to the, your bathroom or anywhere you have a mirror, look at yourself in the mirror, ask yourself question and <laughs> ask yourself question and answer the questions. These are some of the ways in which you can really, really, you know, start this question can sink in and you can really have the mental knowledge of the questions in case you are not so familiar with them. And um, write them down in sticky notes, ask me, some people in your family to, you know, ask you questions. Also ask yourself questions and answer them, record yourself doing it. You get better as you go, but you have to practice. 
the more you practice, the better you, you get. We also mentioned that make sure you do some research about the company, research about um, the your, your hiring manager. That Those will help you as you get ready. Those will help you to prep. Those will help you to get comfortable so that you don't, the, the people that are going to be interviewing you will not look like total stranger anymore since you already did some research about them. It's just going to be a win-win game for you. So we're going to discuss all of those concepts as we get in. We just want to lay the foundation. So I think we thank you all for joining us today. So the first question, are you guys ready? And I hope you are saying hi. I hope you are giving us you know, information about where you are joining from because we want to say hi, we want to welcome you properly. So I'm looking forward to that, to say hi and to also, you know, welcome you properly. If you are trying to break into tech, you know how we roll here. Uh, we we'll always encourage you to schedule a free call with me. Uh, Professor Temi, I'll help you break into tech. It's a free discovery call. Schedule it on www.myituniversity.com. You can see it scrolling down on the right here. Schedule a call so I can, you know, counsel you, help you to break into tech. I will nurture you. I will mentor you to break in and to keep the job. Even at the job, I will still mentor you on there. It might be for you, for your daughter, for your son, somebody trying to break in, okay? So, you know, make sure you let them schedule a call. So let's go right in. Let's take our fork, knife, spoon, <laughs> and take a bite. Great. The first question. We want you to be familiar with the CVEs. What are the CVEs? Great question. And I think if I can just, uh, my takeaway from the introduction from you is really where you mentioned the ability to role play yourself to kind of do that, you know, whether it's an elevation pitch or just, you know, especially because it, it's, it's taking a cobagra, we're talking about being able really to familiarize yourself with the content and being comfortable. So I like the idea of practicing um, in front of a mirror as well as really uh, role playing, whether it's with a, a mentor or even a, a, a member of your family. And just in general, really taking time to research and, and being prepared for the interview because, again, really all that matters. Yes. And uh, another thing, my takeaway is I took a leap of faith. I took a leap of faith and really called you and came to your office. Uh, <laughs> and, and as a person, that is really whether you're, you're you're planning to do a career change or you're just you know considering you know a change in in so many things that this field can offer, you know, whether it's life, work balance, or whatever my, the situation might be for you, I think the first thing is really saying, okay, let me take the first step. Let me take a leap of faith in this. Let me call Professor Tammy, get that consultation. And, you know, once you start talking to her, you know, all those unanswered things that you're feeling, you're not sure, maybe you think, oh, I'm too old to get into tech. I don't have a required background. No, 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 no. I'm here to tell you, really, if you put your mind to it and you give it your 100%, the sky is the limit. Even the sky is a starting point. There's no limit, see? Absolutely. I remember Absolutely. when you came to me. Yeah. You were, you were asking questions for an hour. I was like, what? Before I look at the time, it's an hour already. We're asking all these questions because you've done a lot of training program before and you can't do, do nothing with them. And you were like, I hope I'm not going to be wasting my time again. I hope this is worth it. And of course, you, you, you see, a lot of people that actually were mentored with you, they're all breaking in and broken at that time. That's way back. So, so that's it. We don't play here. We focus... We eat the ground running and we make sure we have all our mentors, mentees, you know, becoming mentors now. They all broke into tech, a lot of them. So, and we continue to help you. So schedule a call. It's not going to be, it's not, it's not business as usual here. It's not business as usual. We are different. Absolutely. And really your platform. Oh, I always say really the opportunity, the opportunity is there, but also somebody has to do their part. Uh, for me, I would have said, oh, I wish I had known about you 20, 20, 15 years ago, because then I was I was following a broken road, but then it's never too late. 
um, you know, God timing is the best. And I met you, you know, three years ago when it was meant to be. And I took your advice. I, you know, I followed your, you know, whatever the steps that you said we do. And fast forward three years later, here we are. So nice. let's get let's get going. So I think you asked me what what is a CVE. So um, for me, and again, this is a question that I, that has come across is uh, the CVE stands for Common Vulnerability Exposures. And as a person in, in security field, I think that's something you should familiarize yourself with. You can Google. Google again should be your best friend. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're in this field or even entering this field, this is really a public information where a multidisciplinary uh, people in the industry share some vulnerability exposures that have been identified to really look at your system to make sure if they are there, you're remediating them and you're giving them the resources that need to be done. So really you are not, you know, vulnerable because I mean, the bad guys, I always say they work overtime and then some. So really, it's really, you, you use them to uh, inform your offense. So you are not always on the defense, so to speak. So again, Excellent. really, uh, there's, there's plethora of information out here. If you just Google and you familiarize yourself, you should have some background of what the CVEs are. Yeah. So it's just pretty much a dictionary of common names of publicly known information system vulnerabilities that are out there. Vulnerability. Every time there's vulnerability, system get attacked due to those vulnerabilities. There are a lot of vulnerabilities. We're going to discuss more of this as we go. It's good to get used to, to this and get exposure to them. So thank you for that. The second question is that we're asking about the difference between security and compliance. People use these terms interchangeably. Some people get confused between the difference between the two. What is the difference between security and compliance? Yeah, actually, this is a very good, uh, very, very good question. And an analogy that I always use is uh, compliance to me, you know, you are seen as, you know, that guy that wears a police hat. You know, you're always like really checking. It's like a checklist you're going through to just make sure your company is complying, whether with the regulations. So we, it's very highly regulated industry, whether it's the payment card industry, the HIPAA laws. So compliance to me is really a checklist, so to speak, mm -hmm. to make sure that you're following those policies, those guidelines, those laws and regulations you know, uh, to, to, to stay afloat. Security to me in, 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 in another world is really, when I think of security, I think of the enterprise holistic view. Like from the initiation of your enterprise, security should be always be in the core, you know, the core center of everything you do. If you are developing like, you know, like a new code or even a, 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 an application, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure security is initiated as part of your integration. And then it continues. It continues through the risk management process from really categorizing your system to selecting those controls, to getting authorized, to implementation, to continuous monitoring. So security to me is really like a living, you know, a living thing, so to speak, that follows a system or an application from cradle to the grave, you know, from the time you initiate that enterprise system and until you decommission it. Exactly. Thank you so much. So compliance is pretty much checklist. Let's say, for example, you have a system. You, you have a system, you build a system. And we talk about system in this instance. We're not talking about the computer. We're talking about the whole system from the infrastructure to the servers, to the people that work on the system, to um to uh the building everything mixed up the system in this case everything needs to be protected so security refers to the systems and control that company implements to protect all this infrastructure to protect your assets asset is what you're trying to protect so what do you do to protect them right so there are checklists of things to do to protect them the checklist is the compliance. You, you check, check, check. One, two, three, it's all listed. So you have to be in compliance. So that means you have to follow the standard. 
the guidelines. When you follow all those standards and the guidelines, then you are in compliance or you may not be in compliance because it's not one hard fit all. It's kind of more complicated than we're thinking because you have to have layers and layers and layers of protection. So we have the first in depth, adequate security. We don't want to go too, too technical at this point with this question, but security is very important. What are the countermeasures? What are the adequate security you put in place to protect yourself against risk? So look at that. So being compliance, you know, if you are saying you are in compliance, that doesn't mean you have all the security that you need to have. See, so if this is really, you can debate this thing a whole, a whole, a whole day. Security and compliance. They look like twin, but they are not. It's too different. So do your research on security and compliance. Even your organization, what are the things they are using to secure the system? And what, does that make them to be compliant? Right? If I put all the control in place, does that make sure, does that make me that I'm in compliant? If I have, okay, let's say for example, agency A, they listed list of their security controls that you have to implement to be in compliance. But you, my mistake, you pick agency B, security control list. If you apply the wrong control on your, you, you say these are your baseline controls. You apply them in place because you are applying, implementing the wrong agency's control. You will not be in compliance when they look at it. It's like they are now assessing it and they were like, okay, which control, which framework is it? Which controls are, are this? We didn't give you this. Oh, where did you get this from? So you are in, not in compliance. It's like you're trying to pass exam for in a, in a, in, a, in an, you're trying to pass an exam and they said, okay, study this. These are what you need to study to pass this exam. But you left it and study another thing. And you say, oh, I've studied all of these things and you failed. Well, is that what they ask you to study? <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? So it can go like that, but security and compliance, they, are, they sound the same, but not the same. Right? Absolutely. And I think I like the analogy that you used because, and I was just thinking as you were talking, um, yeah, you can be, you can have the, 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 the compliance on paper and get out tomorrow. Because then again, if you have that checklist, 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 and your concern is the compliance check mark, and then the implementation, what we spoke about having security as your core pronunciation of the system to the decommissioning, then you're really, you're disadvantaging yourself. So both of them, really, you have to look at them in a different lens and each complement one another. Exactly. Because, see, if you are in compliance, that doesn't mean you are secure. Because now you follow all the rules. Does that mean what they gave you to, to, to control to implement? Does that mean that is all that you need? Does that mean you are secure? What about zero day? So that doesn't mean you are secure. Security is, is like there's a probability that you might get even get hacked, even use all the security in the world. But you we just try our best. It can't be 100 percent The residual risk will still be there. Right? Yes. Okay. So we can we can go on and on. This is really fun. We can go on, on and on on this. We probably should make it a topic and come back and discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So the third question, have you ever participated in any security assessment before? And what is security assessment? What are we talking about? So security assessment is really the way you, you look at uh, your enterprise to see if you are in compliance to whatever it is uh, the assessment or the inspection is about. It can be as simple as maybe you are preparing your system for an ATU accreditation. So what are some of the what, what are some of the ways uh, cybersecurity assessment is done? I believe we have three the three means whereby you can examine 
you can examine like uh, an artifact or you can, uh, you know, a review. You can say, hey, send me your SSP. Show me how you are compliant. If it's, you know, if it's like if, if a security control is asking like for my, you know, for, for my vantage point is asking, you know, for these things to be implemented. So send me like the checklist and how you have, you know, you, you, you comply to this. Another thing is you can interview, you can interview your technical people and say, you know, can you show me, you know, like he was asking about multi-factor authentication. Can you show me how you've implemented this? And then they should really be able, you can even do whether, however you want to do it, if it's through Teams or however way you can conference, especially in this day of teleworking. So there, there are ways to, you know, to kind of really interview even being distance from the person you're trying to interview. And I think uh, the, third, the third one is what? Which was, what was the third one? Interview, and then you test. You can really um, test an application to see, you know, like for example, the multi-factor authentication. If you have, if they've given you an uh, access to that information, you can see whether you're being prompted for a multi-factor authentication when you try to sign into that system. So when we hear about cybersecurity assessment, I think for me the first time I heard it, I was like, oh my god, I can't think of anything. It can be any scenario. Think about your organization, even some of the things that may be going through. It can be even a compliance visit, um, depending on the field you are in. It can be a compliance visit from from even the IT people in your in your enterprise, trying to see if your computer is up to date with the endpoint protection so it, it can really be any scenario but i, I you know my, my thing and through my experience is i don't want this to be like you have to think of yourself having been part of like a penetration testing uh, yeah. <laughs> like, but, uh, no. like a hacker or anything no what about yeah. awareness and training training HC controls. Yes. People yes. need to be trained. Mm -hmm. You need to train your employee your, your employee because if you did, did all the all the security control, you put, implement everything, but if the employees are not trained, they are the one that will go and click on the wrong thing. They are the one that will stick in the wrong thumb drive. They are the one that will infect the system. So absolutely. And yeah, and actually, you, you touched a very uh, key key point there about you know employee training. I think right now the workforce awareness and continuously you know having the cyber refresh training, because I think at the end of the day, really your 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 greatest asset, who is your workforce, mm -hmm. can also be your greatest uh, weakness if they are not properly you know exactly. trained and they're, and they're like you know. Uh, 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 clicking on those phishing links that they're not supposed to. So really, again, back to this question about the assessment, they can be as, 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 as much as really going to even somebody in HR and asking them if they've been trained or not to click, to click on anything that comes through their, their inbox. It can be as you know as simple as that. So exactly. it really it requires thinking out of the box and asking yourself, how can I interpret this question to my background and my experience that I have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know we talk about log keeping logs, the the database logs, the system logs, the all the logs of the network devices and stuff like that. You know, examining, interviewing the the relevant uh, the the point of contact or stakeholder, and testing to see where these logs are, see what it is. Okay, they say they have done this, they have done that. Is it really true? Can you show me what you have done? How do you showcase what you said you have done? So all these things are very important when you do assessment, assessing the system pro to see how they properly implement the control that they said they implemented so that's really really good thank you for for that so another good question we're going to look at is what are some of your weak strength or weaknesses in most cases these are scenario based questions and these are more like behavioral based questions they always add those to technical questions they want to see what are the things that your weakness your strength um yeah we're not gonna you're not gonna say anything too negative that's gonna kill 
kick you out of the <laughs> of the game but you know you're gonna stay positive but let's see you yeah so i think yeah this is one of the questions that i think has been asked um in you know in, in different industries mm -hmm. again they're really trying to see what are your soft skills that make you a good teammate so just think about you know your your teamwork you get along with everybody um uh you can say you know i am i uh, i take the initiative uh to identify a gap you know in any given environment and coming it, it's not just good enough to identify the gap but it's also good to come they always say for every problem you identify you must come with two ways to resolve that problem so it can be in your workflow how can you improve the workflow that you you are you know working on and it, and again this is this is a chance for you to elevate yourself and separate yourself from the rest of the pack speak about you know anything you have, that you've done and i know there are so many things you know uh you've done but you you need to shine a light on that it can be as as as, as simple as saying you know i was tasked with this uh with this project you know i was able to you know to get my teammate in a leadership role to get you know the task accomplished you know within you know ahead of uh, the scheduled uh, deadline and then we were able to you know present it to the leadership it, it received very you know very good feedback and even as a result i was recognized as being a top performer you know talk about the things are really you're passionate about being dependable being reliable being to the go-getter if the manager is, uh, is looking for something to be done they think about you you're, you're the first person that come into mind so really elevate yourself and then another thing they always like to hear is they always like to hear about how you can automate a task so if there is anything that you, you you've been able to to change even it can be like oh when I when I started, they used to ask for paper, like size, you know, uh, hard signed copies. But I thought, hey, I can suggest this idea where we can automate, and instead of really, you know, the time consuming collecting the paper and then having to scan, send, we have we automated, we streamlined. Just thinking out of the box of some of the things that will stick with the hiring manager. So then you're separating yourself again from the other applicants that are being interviewed. Exactly. Thank you so much. Those are your strengths. You also can say I'm a fast learner. They always like to hear that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm self-motivated. I'm very passionate. See, I'm very, let them see the, your passion. I'm mm -hmm. passionate about tech. I love what I'm doing. I love to help my team. You know, And they want to see, if you want to use a scenario of what you have done, use the STAR method, situation, task action and results what situation did you use your strength we're going to go into some of that later what task did you do what action did you take and what was the result so also in your weakness what is your weakness you don't want to say anything negative you can say your weakness is that yeah your weakness my work-life balance i love, love to help people i really like to work a lot i most of the time i work like from from maybe from all the core hours and I work extra. You know, who doesn't want to hear that? Everybody wants to work hard. So don't tell them, oh, I'm always late. Oh, oh I, I get cranky sometimes. Don't say anything crazy. Say something good. I mean, I like to work very well. I work hard. I'm a work, work out, work out. I, you know, things like that. We have okay so that's really good thank you for that so let's look at another so make sure you guys are asking your questions make sure you let us know where you are joining from as you're joining us thank you so much thank you and also share 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 with others so they can also benefit from here um another question now also why do you think you are the best candidate for this role oh wow so this is again i think we might have touched a bit of it this is your yes. early vision pitch summarize in you know in not a boring way your skill your qualification what makes you the best talk about you know the recent certifications that you've uh, uh, obtained talk about your passion for the industry talk about you know how you know again 
the, uh, borrowing from the last question, how you've performed a certain task and you, you excelled. Talk about how, you know, you're, you're the best performer in your team and you're recognized. So this is to me, again, going to the idea of practicing in the mirror. I think everybody should have an elevation pitch where they really, really, really talk about yourself. Because at the end of the day, you have to advocate and really convince somebody that you are the best suited for this role. So again, really that elevation pitch, I can, I can emphasize more in practicing it in front of a mirror. Yes. So there you go. And also record yourself. So, and, and, and this question is, I always say something. There are a couple of questions that are the same, but they ask them differently. Number one, they ask you, tell me about yourself. They're asking you, why are you unique? What is your value uh, proposition? Well, what do you think you are the best candidate for this role? Why should I hire you? The same question be tweaked. Being tweaked. Or well, what motivates you to 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 uh, to, uh, to, to uh, you know apply for this role? Th they are asking the same question. You can borrow, I've said like five, six examples now. You can borrow answers from there and use it. Why do you think you are the best candidate for this role? You are telling them why you are the best, your soft skills, what you have done, your passion, and, and your art skill, things like that. You are using those things to elevate yourself. And whatever is your is your um, differentiating factor, whatever it is, what you're going to showcase. Is it your education? Is it your, if you have clearance, if you're doing clearance stuff, is it your clearance? Is it because you have certifications? What is it? You want to showcase those things. And ever, when time they're asking you questions, tell me about yourself, right? They are not asking you to know about your family history. They are not asking to know about your dog and your cat and whatever. It's not personal. This is about the job. About the job. And you want to know about the job. So that you know exactly what to ask them and that's what we ask the other time to always ask the um recruiter or the hiring manager tell me a little bit more about this project so that they can tell you about the project from this perspective of the hiring manager so that all the questions what like when they ask you now what do you think you why do you think you are the best candidate for this role you will now why whip together the answer that will fit in what the needs is, is for that project okay excellent thank you so much so we're also going to look at uh, when they ask you share a challenging issue or situation you dealt with at work and how do you overcome it and what's the result so i think issue. if i think for this question for me i will go back again and borrow from our previous question where you are applying the style methodology and again star is situation task action result so think of a situation and if you if you haven't had one you can you can think of one that in your head of how you know you can use these four hiding the star methodology situation you narrate the situation you can say even as simple as you know i was you know i i you know i was working on a task and then some something else became of pr high priority and i had really to prioritize and again in this industry when we're thinking of uh, prioritization it can be a zero day a zero day vulnerability where you've been pulled from the task you know you're working on a routine ordinary task to now really being able to be part of this team to mitigate this vulnerability so you can speak about that situation then the task is like what did you do you can say, hey, I involved the rest of the team from the from the, the system administra um, administrators, the development team, the leadership. We looked at, you know, the assets that were affected and we came up. What action did you take? We came up with a mitigation strategy because the, because it was a zero day. There was no patching available. And what were the results? you are able to protect your asset from exploitation mm -hmm. so again think of this question in the star methodology and there are so many scenarios i'm sure you can come up with 
but they want to see it's kind of like a behavior based interview question to kind of see your analytics in thinking and in in so many ways to kind of really um think of that answering that question in the star methodology yeah exactly so we use the star method situation task action results the results are to give you a good outcome right so you want to make sure that you have scenario based questions you know situations okay it can be anything relating to your area of expertise so thank you for that so we call those behavioral questions situational questions and scenario based questions so another one like it is when we ask what do you what do you consider to be some of the challenging trend in cybersecurity in cyber industry what are some of the challenging trend in the industry yeah so this is another question that really there is no you know uh right, right or wrong answer but i think you have to ask yourself especially in this remote work environment where due to covid you know all the workforce was kind of like within no notice everybody was working from home so from that perspective you you you, you think as a security professional what could be go, what could go wrong and a lot of things could be could be going wrong people may not be vpning like they are supposed to mm -hmm. to the environment and that can present a vulnerability for exploitation it can be also you know people being going to public places for wi-fi that is protected so again it goes back to user uh uh, uh training so yes. to me i think the the the, the biggest challenge in the in the in the industry right now is really workforce training just make making sure that your workforce whether it's the hr or even the person that is on the door they are on the on the on the same page and they're keeping abreast with you know some of these evolving you know things that we're trying to to streamline and make sure like you know those refreshment uh training and they're not clicking on the phishing emails they're not being called and and and, and a hacker asking for personal identifiable information or just you know just things that you you know you as a security personnel may be familiar but someone in hr you know need a refresher on so i think again number one for me would be you know the the, the teleworking environment and then the workforce uh training and then I think uh, the third thing I would say is really the digitization of the information is like a, a curse and a, a blessing in, in essence, because then, you know, for one is a blessing because we can share instantly information with anybody in the entire yes. WW world. But then on the same time, that sharing exposes things like the personal information that if it's not protected properly mm -hmm. or even classified information. If exactly. it's not if it's not kept in the right media that is supposed to be or or, or, or utilizing the need to know to yes. access all those. So I mean, this is a question that you can come up with a plethora, plethora of really answers. And again, it's really you know googling and just thinking about these things. Yeah, even I thought about bringing your own device. Everybody yeah. work from home now. What if a time comes and everybody work from home, you got a new job and they say, oh, do you have a computer? Yes. Can you use a computer to connect to our network? Okay. So you connect to their network with your computer while you are waiting. They want it to start like yesterday. While you are waiting for their computer or, or their system. So I, I don't I don't really support bringing your own device because there's a, a lot of exposure can happen. A lot of opportunities for you to get to, to infect their network or for them to infect you, whatever. So that's another thing. So all this work from home, they, we need to make sure everything's in place, the right system, the right connection, the right VPN, the right everything set up. There's no need to rush. If you rush in, you rush into problem. So it's better to do everything properly, correctly, before we get connecting. You know, there's another area too. Right. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I think that's a very important actually thing, um, a point that you brought up. And when when I think about of what you said is really having an acceptable user policy that is enforced. Yes. Again, it's not checking the mark compliant, but uh, are the users aware that they cannot plug in anything on the you know on the network? 
that can bring a, you know a, a malicious script or anything are they aware that they cannot visit certain sites exactly on the network i mean are you making them aware and having them sign with non repudiation where they cannot say oh i did not sign <laughs> yeah and that's the thing right because if you tell give them a policy not everybody is in the same level of understanding of tech some people will still do whatever they gotta do so how do you set it up in such a way that you set it up with policy in place you set it up with us configuring the system in such a way that people don't get access to what they don't need to get access for you set filter stuff uh, on the network. You set to use a proxy. Do whatever you gotta do to configure the system so they don't, can't just get access to anything they want. If they want wow. to do social media, let them do it at home. If they want to do it in, the, at, I mean, when they start poking around at lunchtime, just trying to play away, they click wrong things and download things. And how do you even? make sure that you tighten the security in such a way that they don't have the administrative privilege or, or standard user privilege. What kind of privilege do you give them so that they can only do only what they're entitled to do, not just doing whatever? And actually all those, that, what you just, I think uh, mentioned, we're going to cover it in the next question because I think he's asking yeah, about exactly. the system. It's a good segue, good segue. Let's keep going, let's keep going. It's, it's getting fun, right? Mm -hmm. So what is security admin? System admin. So uh, when, system. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you think of system admin, it can be even a piece of computer is you're looking are all the ways you can have you can have the defense in depth the layered security that we spoke about it's just not about saying oh i have a firewall implemented so i'm good to go i'm secure no think about the firewall think about the the intr intrusion uh, prevention the you know the, the the you know all those things that you're supposed to have to segment your 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 your, your environment um and and when we get a little bit technical it's just like really making sure that you have a patching uh a patching strategy mm -hmm. we talked about the one day vulnerability yeah. and the cve just making sure that somebody is tasked with checking and, and and really updating those in real time to make sure as those zero vulnerabilities come down you are enforcing your patching and all your assets are configured with the reporting agency to make sure you know continuous monitoring is, is, is taking place um and also you know doing as simple things as making sure you don't have any unnecessary open ports mm -hmm. making sure that any devices that you are introducing in your environment is going through the proper config, uh, configuration management uh, uh system whereby you're checking for all the defaults settings password username you're supposed to change all those anyway before you deploy and then continuously having vulnerability scanning i think we, we talked about the tenable nessas that is a tool that you can continuously you know scan your environment and just making sure you know somebody is looking at those reports and dashboard and really looking at mediating them in accordance to criticality yes yeah. also also making sure that you know uh, you're giving the least functionality you talked about the privileged users uh, do they have the training that they need to mm -hmm. really safeguard your asset as a privileged user based on their role based on their role um whitelisting just making sure that in your environment you can whitelist and say you know such and such uh things cannot be connected because i think you can you know there's blacklisting and whitelisting but whitelisting is is better because you explicitly say only this is allowed versus mm -hmm. permitting everybody and then kind of denying denying yeah. in the back end so whitelisting is always really a good a good approach as well as really what we talked about the last question about um making sure your users are having a good acceptable user policy that really addresses things like data loss prevention. If somebody is an insider and they're trying to download information to share that is not supposed to be downloaded, do you have a data loss prevention implemented to catch that? Exactly. Yeah, data loss prevention is very important 
Because the, the one of the major problems we have, the major threat we have, the major threat actor are your insider, the disgruntled employee, your disgruntled employee. People that just want to do certain things, they thought they're not being watched, download things and sell it, or download things and give to others inside your network. That's insider threat. So that's very good. Thank you for that. So security hardening is tightening up security. You tighten it like think I was. You have a, your car. You take it to the mechanic and they remove all this, uh, the nuts and then they tighten it back. So we tighten it with like we're tightening it back down. So even though we put all the control in place, then we can still tighten it a little more. You are adding it. And we mentioned about stick the other time using sticks because after you set all the control up, then you have the sticks. The sticks also you can tighten things up more when you look at those control. Some things that you must have missed. For example, for DOD, they use stick to tighten up their security more as well. So thank you very much. Let's keep going. So the ninth one. How do you familiarize yourself with agencies you are interviewed with? For example, you said they ask you about this CSA before and you were like, oh, I'm not sure what that was. So yeah, let's discuss that. So I think, I, I, yeah, I, I was caught flat food footed, so to speak, because again, uh, I fault myself for not taking time to research. I think we've, uh, we've, we've talked um, even the last time, the, the round one, uh, about how important it is to really research on the organization. Because they're gonna ask you, they're gonna ask you really like anything. So, and is this is all public information? Yes. So go go out there a day before your interview, uh, read about it. Just have some things that really you think on the tip of your fingers that you can you can identify and say, oh, you know, I looked at your website and I I really I really like the life work balance that you have. I like that you have this flexibility of offering your employees four days and they can work you know 10 hours and still be able to to meet their you know their 40 hours i like your culture i like how you promote you know professional training i like your values i like your mission you you, you identify i'm passionate about you know so think of the things as you research about whatever agency or company of your perspective the things that can connect you to the to the people that you're talking to also, if possible, you can always, you know, if you have the names of the people that will be interviewing you, the manager or even uh, the recruiter, um, just, you know, do do a LinkedIn search and just really ch ch check what, what, what are some of the things that you may have in common. It could be maybe you attended the same school. It could be maybe, you know, they like a certain spot that you like and you can use that as a, as a icebreaker. And again, those are the things that really, you know, stay in people's yeah. mind yeah and i always tell people check them out but don't let them know that you check them out when you check them out that you can find a way to tweak that and add that to the answer you might even be having on, in the, on the same group on linkedin and even if you are not on the same group on linkedin since you have found them and you know they're interviewing you join the group because now you can say oh um Oh, by the way, we are discussing in my group on LinkedIn. Guess what? It's in that group too. You might be like, oh, you're in the group too? The major thing is making yourself, making you likable. It's not, at the end of the day, it's not about you being the best, but can they remember when they are trying to make decision? Do you stand out? Absolutely. Are they looking like, wow, I really like to work with we? Oh, wow, I really love to work with this person. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be trained and they're still going to take time to train you, orientation and all of that. They're still going to train wherever they're going to hire. But are you going Actually, to yeah, I'm going to share this experience. A while ago, I was asked um, to, to, to name a few ports. Again, you know, it's this technical question, you know, <laughs> port like port 80, 21, 22, Telnet, what they are. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I, I must admit, I, I, I did not know the answer. And, and the person that was interviewing me gave me some time to think about it. And I, you know, I honestly said, you know, I, 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 I will not recall. Wow. But the person hired me. And when I started in this role, they told me, you know, Lucy, 
you may not have been um louis you may not have been the most um the most qualified or technical person but the fact that you were you were honest because i he said another person would have googled during the interview because it wasn't like an on-camera interview so somebody would have really googled it and kind of really given you know an answer right there on the spot but the, the fact that you know i was honest i tried and it wasn't the right answer that i gave but again i came i came across very authentic mm -hmm. i think he told me yeah i you know you are not the most qualified technical person but i still gave you the job because i believe you have the, there's something in you that is that is very you know very commendable Mm. So, so, so again, don't beat yourself. You do, if you don't know the answer, just you know, be be honest and say, you know, given the opportunity, I will. I'm a quick learner. Uh, I I may not have this, you know, in my fingertips, but I've I, you know I've heard about it. I just don't recall it right now. So you know, exactly. Yeah, and I'm a fast learner. Yeah, and uh, uh, you mentioned ports. I always tell people to know ports. Port eighty HTTP. Port four four three HTTPS. Port 25 SMTP, uh, Telnet, uh, FTP, FTPS. There's some, you know, some basic ports. It's always going to save you at the end of the day. And they're just, you see that you know it or you don't know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, so it's always good to know a couple of those ports in case ports comes up, boom. Even in the exam, ports, easy answer. You see that you know it or you don't know it. Mm -hmm. If you, in most of the time, Security Plus uh, exams, you may have like 10 ports. These are random questions that you can just get it and get out. See? And so, honestly, you can say, you know, I remember, I remember, you know, those sports, you know, from my from my security plus training. Uh, you exactly. know, I I I know what they are meant, to, but I, I, at this, you know, at this moment, I just, you know, but I, I've covered the information. I just cannot, you know, I mean, be genuine. Be genuine. Yeah. Be yeah. genuine. And mm -hmm. it's okay. It's okay not to know everything because they are not expecting you to come in the door knowing everything but they want to know you're a person that can get along with the people mm -hmm. you're a person that is coachable you're a person that can be reliable so just think of yourself coming across genuine and really likable mm -hmm. in so many ways from the other side from your right. voice not interrupting too much giving grace just really, you know, the the, the 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 little things, you know, that we take for granted goes a long way. Exactly. I'm being polite. Oh, thank you for that question. Oh, thank you. You know, and all of that. Oh, wow. That's a great question. And I always tell people too, if you don't know the answer right away, or you want to think about it, you must have a bottle of water with you. That's a trick, right? And then you tell me, oh, can I take a zip of water? Why are you taking that water? What are you doing? thinking you are thinking right mm -hmm. i thought you put the water down your thoughts oh yeah mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. give the answer mm -hmm. that's a trick yeah and sometimes i will say i'm a little bit nervous today and my <laughs> you know my memory may not firing right you know just 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 some things some medicate here and there exactly. you know? yeah 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you want to break the ice, you can say, oh, such a warm, lovely, lovely weather. Oh, such a lovely weather here in, in Washington, D.C. area. Oh, I hope you all have a wonderful day over there. You know, just making it like breaking the ice because yeah. you never know what the hiring manager is actually going through, what, the, what their day this day is like. Maybe you are the one that make their day. You, what you said, make them a day to be special, you know. So that's very, very important to make the likable. And the last question, um, they can also ask you, give example of some of the network devices you have worked with. Yeah, and, and, and this the, the list is really endless. For as simple as the firewall, the routers, the, the intrusive devices, prevention devices, I mean, data loss prevention. I mean, it's just so many, you know, so many things that you can think of. Exactly. The off, the switch, the load balancer, this pretty much comes from Security Plus class. Mm -hmm. That's what I always tell people. You must do Security Plus. You cannot escape it. You can't say, oh, I'll just do this. I'll... No, 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 no. Security Plus is the foundation. You start with it. So 
Yeah, that's it. So thank you so very much, uh, Louis, for, for coming and for, for, for giving your time out to, to be with us. We've been here for the past 54 minutes. Just, just going over a question and having fun. That's what we're saying. If you break into cybersecurity, you will love it. It's fun. Once you know all these concepts, you will be able to just keep it for life. These are knowledge you learn in class, and you're going to keep it for life. That's what we said here at Mighty University. We don't only train you, we, we help you to break in. And we have so many frameworks like uh, the RMF, the ISO, and the, all these other frameworks. We train you on those frameworks here at my IT university, and we help you break into them. You don't have to need to have an IT background. This is more of a business side of cybersecurity. No coding, no scripting, no math that is involved to break in into this. And we also looked at it in the other time, you have some skills, soft skills, hard skills, you already leverage to break in from your previous job. Maybe you have communication, collaboration, problem solving and all of that, you can easily break in and you have some hard skill as well. Typing, office support, Jira, Zoom, even being on Zoom, right? Those are skills. So feel free to, to reach out to us, okay? Connect on LinkedIn. These are LinkedIn and my LinkedIn support, um, you know, connection. You can also send me an email if you have questions. Also follow us on different social media platforms, including um, you know, YouTube. Look for us. We are also on um, on LinkedIn. We're on Twitter, on Instagram, on, on uh, Clubhouse. Follow us, on, follow us on Clubhouse. Okay, we're going to help you. We provide your coaching, the mentoring, networking, and community support. We pretty much all do and support you for a lifetime. So before Louis goes, I want her to give an, a final advice. What advice are you giving to all aspiring cybersecurity analysts? I would say really is to stay hungry. Stay hungry for information. Um, always seek to, to know what are the new nuances. Uh, whether it's really like attending, you know, one of your one of your one of your social presentations here at uh, Professor Tammy's, or even just uh, networking with the folks uh, in LinkedIn, listening to podcasts, just really staying abreast of the things that are happening in cybersecurity. That's the only really way you can stay uh, relevant. Uh, be hungry to get more certification. Professor Tammy spoke about the security plus. That's really like the foundation. And don't, don't stop there. You know, once you get your, your, your security plus, get your cap, get your CISSP, get your, you know, the, the, really like you said, uh, the, the sky is, is the baseline. So keep soaring. And there is a, a, a network of people here that have been in your shoes that are able and, and able and willing to really assist you if you have any you know if you have any questions connect with us we're really here to kind of uh support everybody and and and, and through this uh, good platform that professor uh tammy has so take advantage of it again you know the, the first step is really saying you know uh, uh taking that leap of faith and 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 and, and doing it and because you're doing it for you Thank you so very much, Leon Louis, for, for coming and for sharing from your wealth of experience and knowledge and for coming to give back. Because so, some people, when they break in, they, they forget about everybody. We, we've helped thousands of engineers into tech, and if all the thousands are here, that would be good, right? But the ones that are here are committed and they're always giving back, giving back. That's why I say we keep you, we help you break in. Even today, some people broke in today. Some people broke in today. So every single day people are breaking in and we're bringing thousands, millions of dollars in, back into our community every week, every week. I mean, every month, I'll say. So so I'm so happy that you join us. Some weeks we have six people joining to break into tech. Six people times 100,000. 100, or some people make more than 100,000. That's like almost, almost uh, 700, 800, sometimes a million per week sometimes. So that's a lot when you look at it per month. So it's millions, surely, per month. So, so we thank you so much, Louis, for being here. And uh, I'm sure we can go ahead and more and more series on <laughs> interview questions and answers. You know, it does, it's unlimited. But we have done some great, great work with this too. A series that we have done so far. 
and in the future i'm sure we'll bring more concerning cyber security question and answers uh, so look out for us follow us and um, connect schedule a call and we'll surely help you to break into tech thank you one more time and uh, louis for being here really truly appreciate you and all that you do wish you all the best in your future endeavor thank you so much and have a lovely evening thank you you, you too thank you so much thank you bye-bye mm -hmm. bye everybody mm -hmm.